Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlis here. We have a battle with Dallas, who went up against Mega Man NG. Apparently, he's a somewhat popular YouTuber, so this, I expect this to be a pretty good battle. It looks like it's it looks like some kind of crazy team on both sides, though. So this could be very entertaining to watch. So Jose, I guess, is Mega Man NG. Uh, checked out the channel, 10,000 subs, and I, I didn't see much Pokemon content, but it looks like there is some battling going on. So. It's interesting to see, okay, so that's a trick. Fridge Rotom, interesting, very. So now, I'm just I'm just very confused. Like, when you have the Fridge Rotom, I would've tried to open with that Blizzard and really do some damage to Dritagon, but instead it rushes into the Dragon Tail, and now it's kind of stuck in that position. Braviary comes out with a U-turn and tries to even get more switches going while da trying to damage onto Dritagon. So Drudagon is a defensive tank, you know, the rocky helmet that it had with that t rough skin can do a lot of damage, and as you can see, it's not receiving a lot of damage either. Doing a good job at that. So, yet again, just sticking to that Dragon Tail, doing a fair amount of damage, getting hurt by its own rocky helmet. And the irony is ferocious with this one. So now Rose Raid comes out, and Sludge Bomb from Rose Raid, that might do it right here. Ooh, oh man. Just right, barely with the survival, and then the poison comes out. So Dritagon does a good amount of damage with those Dragon Tails. Hits, gets a little damage on Braviary from its ability. Does good amount of damage to Rose Raid and good amount of damage to Rotom before fainting, while just kind of leaving the, uh, while just kind of reading, uh, trying, to, trying to talk here, while kind of leaving the ally in a good position to get set up because you know the Pokemon they have now. And you know you kind of got a little bit of work done. So Braviary comes in with that Brave Bird, and that's going to be terrible for Hawlucha. So there's a survival. I had to pretty much anticipate the Focus Sash at this point if you just leave in Hawlucha against a Flying type. So Hawlucha goes for that High Jump Kick. That could have also been terrible if High Jump Kick misses. But this looks like it's going to be good all around because with that Focus Sash proc, Unburdened procs as well. And now the battle starts to get pretty interesting. So Alucha comes out, knowing that the fake out on Mind Shao is going to be a problem, and brings in Avalug. Now, I love Avalug. I haven't seen Avalug in a while, and I honestly haven't used Avalug in a while. But it's a very durable Pokemon that, with the leftovers, it becomes so much of a defensive tank. It can use Curse. It sets up, um, it sets up Rapid Spin, so it's a good spin wall, and just does not like taking damage. That's a super effective hit. And it only did about a third, so now it's starting to set up its curse. It has a recover in its back pocket. And if you let this guy get set up, it's very difficult to deal with as a physical wall. Now, the only problem is it's glass. It is so frail to a special attack. But that's that's kind of the trade-off right here. That you have the highest one of the highest defensive Pokemon in the game with really solid hit points. So it can't be best at both. So there's the recover right there. Has that free curse. And... Yeah, just back at full health, just like that. Here comes Rotom. Rotom could pose a problem depending on how it decides to break this guy down. We're going to see how this one comes through. So another curse. So now Avalog's looking at some good attack, and Rotom gets in that Will-O-Wisp just to try to status down this wall that, you know, left even with the leftovers, it's still taking a 16th of its health every turn. And that's, that can wear down on a tank, or at least force you into some uncomfortable positions. As a tank, you don't want to have to worry about percent health. You just want to endure. So Rotom goes for the Volt Switch after setting up the burn. Because of that special defense weakness, you know, that did about, not quite half, but it did a good amount of damage, chunked into it. And here comes Starmie, which could pose a problem. Ooh, that, that is something I have not seen before. My goodness, okay, the words escape me, my god, that's amazing, I, I, I was like, words escape me again, so Mind Shao comes in, fakes out, now Avalug does have a lot of defenses set up, gets that flinch, I have to talk about that, so anticipating the Volt Switch most likely, goes for the Mirror Coat, Mirror Coat ends up dishing a KO to the Starmie after Volt Switch happened. That's just a remarkable thing that I've never seen happen before. I don't know if it's ever happened to Pokemon. Like, that's the first time this has happened, because, I mean, that was 
truly magical to witness. So now we get to watch Avalug walling out Mind Shao. And it kind of looks like, you know, both of the special attackers that this guy brought. I wasn't paying attention to um, Jose's team, but Starmie was kind of the best bet of handling Avalug. And I thought Avalug was in trouble, but that mirror coat just being pure magic. And here comes a huge ice uh, or avalanche. So Avalanche gets a lot of power if you move last. Avalug is slow. Avalug is going to move last, and Avalug is going to tank a hit really well. So Avalug set up now, has a lot of curses under its belt. Oh, Roserade most likely going to be a problem, but Avalug has done enough work to this point. So here comes a Leaf Storm, and finally, the Beast has fallen. But if you can find out how to deal with your opponent's special attackers, you know, just run Florgus and Avalug, they're going to have a very hard time to just deal with you. And here comes Halucha. Halucha rushing into that taunt. What does Halucha know that we do not? Sludge Bomb from the... I would have... Uh, yeah, I guess with Halucha really only having that flying press under its belt. Taunt just one of the better things just to be safe and scout it out. So here comes Volcarona. Volcarona is a good thing. A good pick right there. Roserade has nothing to do with that. And Arcanine versus Volcarona creates an interesting position right here. So, free quick Quiver Dance for Volcarona. And what's Arcanine have under up its sleeve to handle the Volcarona? Volcarona also has Psychic, so that's going to be a big hit right here with that free Quiver Dance. Critical hit. Arcanine barely surviving, going for that crunch. And Volcarona is a tanky, durable Pokemon, so not much back. Life Orb on Arcanine. And that just sealed Arcanine right there. Um, it's Rotom and Roserade left, I believe. Volcarona definitely handles Roserade, and it's somewhat set up against Rotom, so we're going to watch this one come through. Fiery Dance onto the Frozen, or the Ice-type Rotom, so that's going to be quick work right there. And gone. So, Rotom faints. Do we get that special attack boost from Fiery Dance? Eh, doesn't matter. Roserade's pretty low on health anyway. And Psychic, Fiery Dance, Quiver Dance... It's all over. So, Roserade goes down, and that's a battle. Man, that Avalog play. Very enjoyable. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys like this Fan Fridays. I think that's a good start. Honestly, a great start to Fan Fridays.